Hello dear Sati students, uh, I am Priyanka Rajiv from Department of Mechanical Engineering, IIT Kanpur. This is lecture 3 of Laws of Motion. Uh, so today we will be talking about Newton's second law of motion. Continuation, we will be discussing some questions from the previous lecture. And uh, we will be discussing impulse momentum theorem. So here, uh, this question... Uh, this is also a continuation of um, Newton's second law of motion. So the question says, a bullet of uh, mass 0 0.04 kg moving with a speed of 90 meter per second enters a heavy wooden block and it is stopped after a distance of 60 centimeter. Okay. What is the average resistive force exerted by block on the bullet? So the question is like this. So there is a block, a wooden block. And this is the bullet. Sorry, bullet should be sharp. This is a bullet. Okay. And it is coming at a velocity of 90 meter per second. Now, uh, okay, one second. Okay, uh, 90 meter per second, and it it goes some 60 centimeter inside that wooden block, and it stops here. Okay, and it stops here. So the velocity of this bullet here is zero meter per second. Now we want to find the force exerted by the block on the bullet. So here we will write the given conditions. Given is mass equal to 0 0.04 kg. And initial velocity is 90 meter per second. Distance is equal to 0 0.6 meter, that is 60 centimeter. Final velocity is equal to 0 meter per second. Now we want to find force. We know from Newton's second law, force equal to change in momentum, right? So change in momentum. Also, uh, here, from these quantities, can you find the acceleration that this bullet is having? I mean, acceleration in the sense like it is slowing down, right? This bullet, uh, it has started with the velocity 90 meter per second while it, it was uh, going inside the wooden block. It, it had 90 meter per second. And it has reached uh, almost like 60 centimeter deep inside the wooden block and it has stopped. That means uh, gradually the velocity was decreasing. So if the velocity was decreasing, that means there is a resistive force acting on that bullet, which uh, caused a deceleration on that bullet. So that deceleration, if you can calculate, you can find the force easily because you have a uh, you have the mass of the bullet given here, right? Because force equal to mass times acceleration. You just want to find the magnitude of the resistive force, right? So uh, to find acceleration, we know that from the equations of uniformly accelerated motion, V square equals U square plus 2AS, right? So V square equals U square plus 2AS. Here V square, you can take minus also, but then the acceleration sign will change. Here you will get whatever we are calculating, we will get, in, uh, get an acceleration with the negative sign, which indicates that it is a deceleration. That means acceleration is acting opposite to the direction of motion. Here, uh, if I take a negative sign, 
then from the question itself i have already assumed it to be a deceleration so negative a i will be getting a as some positive quantity again uh, you have to understand that it is in the opposite direction of motion okay so anyway uh, right now i am taking this as plus 2 as so v square uh, or vi here uh, i was using the notation vi square equals sorry um so v here is final velocity and u is initial velocity so for uh, in our question we were using vi and vf for initial and final so i'll be using that here so this is vf square equals vi square plus 2 times a and s so vf square is 0 And v i square is ninety square plus two times a times s is point six. Okay, so when you are calculating, you will be getting a equals minus ninety square by two times zero point six. That is equal to uh, minus eight one zero zero by 1.2 meter per second square now with acceleration you can find uh, force force equal to ma which is equal to 0.4 times minus 8100 point uh, divided by 1.2 so again you will be getting force in terms of a uh, in in negative Uh, number so that indicates it is a resistive force okay now the if you want to get the quantity that is 270 newton okay now so you have learned about force so far so force with that uh, we were talking about another quantity called momentum and the change in momentum is called as force another quantity which um, qualitatively analyzes the force is impulse impulse to say in a uh, layman's term it is a effect of so effect of force effect of force like how um, how uh, how impactful the force is like effect of force or impact of force is called impulse impact of force like for example if i am applying a kind of like a force over a period of time for example if i am applying 5 newton of force on you for a period of 5 hours like gradually i am applying that force on you the impact will be less than uh, if when i suddenly give that 5 newton force for example if uh, you are inside a car and uh, the car is braking the driver is braking slowly okay then uh, you want uh, move from this from your seat right if you're a passenger you you won't be feeling a sudden force which cause a jerk on you right but imagine there is a cat uh, that suddenly jumps uh, across the road and the uh, driver has to apply a sudden brake the uh, in both the cases the force that is exerted will be the same but the time uh, over which the force exerted will be uh, different for example in the first case when it was gradually applied the time was larger and when it was uh, like suddenly applied the time is small so that is causing uh, an a different impact and suddenly you will be thrown off your seat so that is called as impulse okay so impulse is a product of force times time okay 
now how to find this thing a total impulse uh, if um, we are uh, it is in general it is impulse equals to uh, force times the interval of time since we are taking uh, the infinitesimal changes of impulse we will be taking time tending to time interval tending to zero which will give you a very small interval dt and to find impulse you will integrate di over the time period t1 to t2 you will be getting ft2 minus t1 so the new uh, unit is newton second of imp impulse the unit is newton second or kilogram meter per second because uh, newton is kilogram meter per second square uh, times second will give you kilogram meter per second now the uh, important part of this lecture impulse momentum theorem so what is impulse momentum theorem so uh, we know uh, according to second law forces change in momentum so if you take uh, this uh, dt uh, if you multiply both the sides with dt you will be getting uh, f times dt is equal to dp right so uh, then to find the total momentum you have to take um, you have to integrate both the sides that will give you uh, if if you are considering a time interval uh, from t1 to t2 and if you take momentum p1 at t1 and the final momentum p2 at t2 then you are integrating if you are integrating over the time period t1 to t2 uh, it will give you impulse as change in momentum so this result is very important uh okay now to calculate the impulse you have to uh, using the graphical method how to find that is if you consider a graph of force versus time force versus time the area under the curve gives you impulse area okay area under curve of force versus time graph will give you impulse the quantity of impulse that was acting on the object okay so uh, how to find this it's like this is the area this yellow shaded portion is the area under the ft graph okay so area is area of rectangle of uh, let's name this rectangle as o a b c o a b c then that is equal to length times breadth so length we can take it as o a times c o c so o c is you know this length is f because it's given like this it's f and this length is t2 minus t1 so that is f times t2 minus t1 so f times t2 minus t1 we know that is f times the change in time is equal to uh, impact uh, sorry impulse so that is impulse okay now another if so this is for constant force okay this is for constant force now what if this uh, there is a variable force when f uh, force is a function of time when force is a function of time you have to consider uh, just the just like the previous case where you found the area of rectangle you can find the area of rectangle but here there is no proper rectangle if you see it in a larger uh, i mean larger magnitude so you have to um, think about smaller strips of 
smaller strips of rectangles here like this so here this this is a small strip of rectangle you will choose to uh, find the area of so if you take there is a small uh, force that is uh, the small change in force over here okay and here there is a small change of interval dt okay so oh, no, no not like this okay so here the change in force is almost invisible so that we will take as a force f1 corresponding to dt like that there will be several corresponding forces over here this will be f2 this will be f3 and corresponding interval of time will also be there that, that will be equal equal distant um, strips we are taking so this f1 plus f2 plus f3 plus there will be a lot of strips like this fn times dt so summation of all this smaller areas will give you impulse okay summation of equal to summation of fn times dt where n goes from 1 to infinity like very minute uh, kind of time interval we are taking so there will be infinite number of force terms over here because every point in this curve we are taking for calculating the impulse every point in this curve we are taking so the, uh, there are infinite number of points in this curve now um, that can be taken as what if you uh, for for this one small rectangle the area under this shaded portion will give you di so di is equal to f times f1 times dt okay now to find i we will integrate f from t1 to t2 okay so that is how you find the impulse uh, under variable force i equal to integral t1 to t2 f dt so this will be a time function uh, a function of time and you are integrating with respect to time then you will find impulse now impulse momentum theorem in uh, real life application you can see um two scenarios where they are catching a ball okay so two scenarios are there uh, case one is a cricketer case two is a cartoon character okay so you can see the cartoon character is keeping the hand just below the ball and it is uh, striking her hand and it is like rebounding back it's bouncing back okay and this first scenario where the cricketer is holding you can uh, see how uh, how he is moving his hands so first the ball is approaching he is moving his body towards the ball and he is moving his arms along the direction of the ball so slowly he is moving his uh, hands along the direction of the ball touching the ball slowly so that it he can retard that ball's um, velocity right you can see that it's slowly getting decelerated and slowly he's catching it like first he's moving the hand along the direction of the ball and slowly he's catching it so which case is uh, will have less uh, i mean less risk of injury any uh, anybody who has played cricket knows that cricket or any uh, games that include catching of you know um, any uh, object will understand that the first scenario is the right scenario where you are giving more time for the object to exert force okay so in that manner impulse will be 
less over there. So I is less over here. I is more over here because time is less over here and here time is more. Okay. Now, uh, here you have to find the... Uh, Okay, this this question we have to find the answer for this question. So what what is the question? Force time graph. Force time graph of a body is given below. What is the velocity of the body at the end of eleven second? What is the velocity of the body at the end of eleven second? Mass of the body is seven kg. Assume that the body starts from rest. Okay. So to find that. We have to uh, remember this thing F equal to dP by dt. Okay. F equal to dP by dt. So, velocity of the. So, uh, here we know the initial force and final force. Initial force is 5 Newton, final force is 10 Newton. And initial time is 5 seconds and final time is 11 seconds. And mass of the body is 7 kg. We want to find the velocity of body at 11 seconds. Okay. And they have asked, uh, they have said that assume that the body starts from rest. That means... Uh, so we have to find v final, but u is or v v initial or u is given as zero meter per second. Now to find this, we know that impulse is equal to area under F D graph. Impulse. equal to area under area of ft graph now to find the area of this curve area under this curve we are considering two area uh, two shapes one is triangle another one is this rectangle so to find the area of this triangle how to find this it is half times base into height so base is 11 minus 5 and height is 10 minus 5 that is equal to 1 by 2 times 3 6 sorry 6 times 5 which is equal to 15 okay newton second because that is the impulse over here now here for this shape second shape that is a rectangle so that is length times breadth that is equal to length is we can take this as length so length is 11 minus 5 and breadth is 10 minus 5 which is equal to 6 times 5 which is equal to 30 newton second Adding 1 and 2, we get area under the curve is equal to 15 plus 30, which is equal to 45 Newton second. We also know that impulse equal to change in momentum. So impulse we know Momentum is m times v final minus v initial. m also is given, that is 7. So, 7 times, uh, so this is 7. So, 7 times vf we don't know. And vi we know it is to be 0. So, 45 equals 7 times vf. That gives you Vf equal to 45 by 7 meter per second. So that's how we find the uh, velocity.
of the object given the forces that acts on the object at various instants of time t1 and t2 and the mass of the object now another question is this okay so a batsman hits back a ball straight in the direction of the bowler without changing so b o w l e r sorry without changing its initial speed of 10 meter per second if the mass of the ball is 0.15 kg find the impulse imparted to the ball okay so consider a batsman hmm? so he is batsman and you have a bowler okay so bowler so he is first throwing this ball and he's bowling to this batsman at a speed of 10 meter per second this ball's mass is 0.15 kg now in the second case after hitting the ball uh it again moves at a velocity of 10 meter per second to the bowler okay now we have to find the impulse imparted impulse so in the first case what is the momentum over here p1 equal to m times v1 is equal to 0.15 times 10 which is equal to 1.5 okay um kilogram meter per second in the second case p2 you can see m times v2 which is equal to again 0.15 times 10 which is equal to 1.5 kilogram meter per second but you can see that these two are vector quantities and p2 is negative of p1 or the other way around p1 is the negative of p2 so to find impulse we know impulse equal to change in momentum which is equal to p2 minus p1 okay So P two, we know it is one point five minus minus of P one is this. That means three kilogram meter per second. That is equal to three newton second. Right. So this is how we find the impulse. Now, next question. Okay. So this question says, a rubber ball of mass fifty gram falls from a height of one meter and rebounds to a height of fifty centimeter. Okay, so this is the first case. This is the floor. This is one meter height. So here the ball is here, and it is falling. and it has a mass of 50 g okay now the second case is it will be reaching the floor okay it will be reaching the floor here with a velocity of v right some velocity mm -hmm. with the velocity of v it will be reaching so it is falling like Initial velocity here is zero, zero meter per second. It is at rest and it is falling. And while uh, during the fall, due to acceleration of gravity, it is attaining this velocity of v. Okay, and after hitting the floor, it is bouncing back. Okay, bouncing back. This time, let's imagine. the velocity to be something different from v let it be v dash and it reaches the height something around this 50 cm okay 
50 centimeter is something really smaller and the velocity here v final is equal to 0 meter per second at the topmost point of point of the ball's trajectory now to find uh, okay the question was calculate the impulse and the average force between the ball and the ground if the time during which they are they were in contact was 0 0.1 second okay now let's write what is given given mass of the ball is 50 gram which is equal to 50 times 10 to the power minus 3 kilogram and what else is given uh, the different scenarios like the initial height at which the ball fell and the final rebound height both are given this is a 50 centimeter and one meter we know uh, we have to calculate impulse so impulse we know that it is change in momentum which is equal to final momentum minus initial momentum which is equal to uh, we have to think about this two velocities v dash and v okay so in fi uh, final momentum is m times v dash and initial momentum is m times v okay between these two uh, situation we are calculating the change in momentum so we know that this v and v dash are having opposite sign because one is going towards the floor and another is coming towards the ceiling so that means mv dash plus mv okay now since the mass of the object is constant v dash plus v we can take now we have to find the velocity v over here so how to find that v square equal to u square plus 2 as so here u the initial velocity was given as zero so that is zero now v square equals to 2 times g we can take it as 10 times s is 1 so v equals root of 20 meter per second similarly we will be calculating v dash so v dash again is equal to v dash square equals sorry uh, oh. In this case, uh, what is the initial and final? Final velocity is zero. Okay, final velocity is zero meter per second. Initial velocity is v dash. So we have to write it as zero equals v dash square plus two a s. Okay, here you have to uh, be careful about the sign of acceleration because V dash is going towards the ceiling and gravity is always towards the floor. So you have to take it as V dash square plus 2 times minus G times S is 0 point, uh, 0, 0 0.5. Okay, 50 centimeters, so 0 0.5 which is equal to v dash square is equal to uh, okay v dash square equal to 2 times minus 10 times 1 by 2 which is equal to minus 10 we are just calculating the okay this is also negative so yeah negative and negative becomes positive so v dash equal to root 10 meter second so we got v and v dash now we can find delta p delta p equal to m times v dash plus v which is equal to m, m is uh, 50 gram 50 times 
10 to the power minus 3 kilogram times v dash equal to root 10 plus root 20. You can simplify these values to get uh, impulse as 0 0.38 newton second. That is delta P. Now we have to find uh, the average force between the ball and the ground. So when the ball is hitting the ground, the, uh, the ground is exerting some kind of force over the ball, which is equal to the force exerted by the ball, like the normal reaction. Okay. Uh, why is it so that that comes in the next portion of laws of motion, which is Newton's third law. Anyway, so the average force between the ball and the ground, we have to find with the time duration 0 0.1 second. So T equal to 0 0.1 second. We know that I equal to, so I equal to delta P equal to this one. I equal to F times delta T. So delta T is given. F we have to find, I we found. So I equal to 0 0.38 F times 0 0.1, which is equal to F equals 0 0.38 divided by 0 0.1, which is equal to 3.8 Newton. Okay. So, um, this is how we solve the question. So once again, let me rewind. We were asked to find the impulse and force uh, if the ball was in contact with the ground for 0 0.1 second and a ball was dropped uh, from a height of 1 meter and re it rebounds to the height of 50 centimeter. Now uh, we want to... Uh, calculate the impulse for that we found the velocity at which the ball is hitting the ground and the velocity at which the ball is rebounding given the height uh, the distance the ball was traveling okay that is how we were doing this calculations using the uniformly accelerated motion equations uh, and then from that we found the change in momentum and we know that change in momentum equal to impulse so we found the impulse using that. And then we uh, with impulse equation, I equals F times delta T, we found the average force between the ball and the ground. Now the next question. A ball is moving with the momentum of 5 kilogram meter per second or 5 Newton second, strikes against a wall at angle 45 degree and is reflected at the same angle. Calculate the magnitude of change in momentum. Okay. So how to find that? So this is the wall. This is a wall. Now, a ball is coming uh, and hitting the wall at an angle of 45 degree. Okay. And it is... This is the normal to the wall, okay? So it is re reflecting or rebounding at an angle, again, at the same angle, 45 degree. It is rebounding. So the momentum is given. So Pi is equal to 5 Newton second. Now we want to find Pf to find the change in angle. Okay. So now Pi is given and we can visualize this momentum, this two momentum as vectors, right? Pi is one vector, Pf is another vector. And whenever the angles are given, we have a innate nature of resolving these vectors to horizontal and vertical components to you know make calculation easier. Okay, so this Pf can be resolved into Pf cos 45 and Pf sin 45. Similarly, this Pi can be resolved into 
P uh, I can be resolved into if I take these two components, horizontal and vertical, P I. Mm, so if this is 45, then this is 45. Correct. So P I sine 45 and P I cos 45. Right. Now, we want to see something else also. Okay. When you take a closer look at the ball's contact with the wall when it is hitting, so it is coming like this and it is hitting the wall. Okay. So you can see there's a contact surface like this. Mm -hmm. So the reaction force of the wall is always horizontal or perpendicular to the contact surface. So that means the force exerted by the wall is always in horizontal direction. We know by Newton's second law, the force, the change in momentum is uh, the sum of net force. Okay. So that means if there is all, there is a force acting only in the uh, horizontal direction that means only the horizontal momentum will be changing because there is no uh, change there cannot be a change in momentum in the vertical direction be, uh, because there is no force that is acting in the vertical direction uh, please note that we are not um, considering the gravitational force here okay because you know that all the physics uh, problems that we are solving right now is in uh, some uh, is with some assumption so here we are not assuming uh, we are not considering gravity at all okay so in that manner what we will be saying is um, the only change in momentum in momentum is in horizontal direction as force is exerted only in only in uh, horizontal direction so we can see that the vertical components of initial and final momentum is same. So PI cos 45, that is the vertical component of uh, uh, the uh, initial momentum and PF cos 45, both are the same. So PI we know it is five Newton second is equal to PF. Okay. Now, uh, magnitude of change in momentum, we can take it as. Um, so we have to calculate the magnitude of change in momentum. So that, uh, that should be calculated using this vector notation. PF minus PI equal to PF is what? Horizontally, it is PI sine 45 degree. So that is towards this direction. That means it's negative, negative I cap plus PI cos 45 J cap. Now this is PF. Sorry, this is once, once again, I'll write. So PF is from here we have to take so pf in horizontal it is pf sine 45 plus pf cos 45 degree so this is i cap and this is j cap okay so and PI can be written as, I'll write it in the next line, 
पी आई माइनस पी आई साइन फोर्टी फाइव डिग्री आई कैप प्लस पी आई कॉस फोर्टी फाइव डिग्री जे कैप राइट नाउ वी कैन सी दिस पी एफ साइन फोर्टी फाइव डिग्री प्लस माइनस ऑफ माइनस पी आई साइन फोर्टी फाइव डिग्री कम्स इन द हॉरिजोनल डिरेक्शन एंड इन द वर्टिकल डिरेक्शन इट इज पी एफ कॉस फोर्टी फाइव डिग्री माइनस पी आई कॉस फोर्टी फाइव डिग्री जे कैप सो पी एफ एंड पी आई इज इक्वल टू फाइव न्यूटन वी हैव फाउंड इट हियर फाइव न्यूटन सेकेंड सो दिस विल बिकम जीरो ओके दिस विल कैंसल आउट एंड वॉट रिमाइंड इज पी एफ साइन फोर्टी फाइव प्लस पी आई साइन फोर्टी फाइव आई कैप प्लस जीरो जी कैप वॉट इज पी एफ साइन फोर्टी फाइव एंड पी आई साइन फोर्टी फाइव पी एफ इज गोल्ड फाइव साइन फोर्टी फाइव इज रूट टू वन बाय रूट टू देन हियर इट इज पी आई पी आई इज अगेन फाइव बाय रूट टू आई कैप प्लस जीरो जी कैप विच इज इक्वल टू फाइव प्लस फाइव टेन बाय रूट टू विच इज इक्वल टू फाइव रूट टू न्यू टेन सेकेंड सो दिस इज हाउ वी फाइन द चेंज इन मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ द मोमेंट ओके देन दैट्स फॉर टूडे Thank you so much uh, so we will continue this discussion in the next class thank you very much